forsake and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. Good morning, everybody. I have the mission story today, so bear with me. I've read it a couple times, but I don't like being up front. <laughs> Forgive me, Father, is what it's called. I wasn't raised a Christian. I never even thought about God growing up, just like many of the 127 million people in my home country of Japan. But I had many thoughts about my father. I didn't like him. My parents divorced when I was young, and I ended up living with my mother, but visited my father on weekends. When I was 14, my father fell ill, and I had to take care of him for, on the weekends. I didn't want to be his nurse. It was very stressful, and I was young, and I had many other things to do. I would complain, why me? Whenever I saw my father, I told him, I hate you. I cried a lot. I think that my, mother, my father cried, too. After a while, he died. I decided to move to the United States to study animation. Before I started school in Los Angeles, I visited some cousins in Chicago who are Seventh-day Adventists. They invited me to go to church on Sabbath, and I really liked it. This was my first time in a Christian church. But I didn't have time for church after I started studying. For six months, my cousins asked me whether I had found an Adventist church in Los Angeles. Finally, I went to the Glendale Filipino Seventh-day Adventist Church. My plan was just to listen to the sermon, then go home and talk to my mother on Skype. But the church was filled with young people like me, and they stopped me whenever I tried to leave. We ate lunch together, and then they invited me to hang out with them in the afternoon. My new friends called me the next day and wanted to hang out again. They called every day. And after a while, I realized God showed his love through Christians and my friends were showing me God's love. I wanted to know more, and I asked many questions about God and the Bible. One of my friends was a Bible worker, and she gave me Bible studies. I loved my friends, and I wanted to be baptized. But I couldn't forget how I treated my father. I wished that I could ask for his forgiveness. One night, I had a dream. I saw my father lying on the floor. His face was very white as he, if he was close to death. He stared at me and didn't say a word. I was stunned to see him looking at me like that, and I thought, oh no, he will never forgive me. The next night, I had the same dream. Again, I saw my father laying on the floor, but this time he smiled at me and said, thank you. I thought, my father has forgiven me, and this is what God does for us. Even though he didn't, we don't always act the right way, God forgives us and loves us. When my father said thank you in the dream, I sensed the joy of salvation for the first time. The heaviness in my heart disappeared. I knew I was forgiven. When I woke up, I prayed, thank you, God. Jesus forgiving, has forgiven me. I can feel Jesus' love. The dream eliminated the last barrier to baptism. I realized that God could forgive, and I felt his love through the people of the church. I understood 1 John 4.12, which says, if we, want lo if we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfect in us. My cousins flew from Chicago to celebrate my baptism three months later after the dream. They were surprised but happy about my decision. Now I'm 24-year-old, and I'm working in a non-governmental organization near Tokyo. I decided not to work in animation because animation is used monthly, mostly for video games in Japan, and I don't want to make video games. So I work as an art therapist for children. My organization uses art therapy to help children overcome trauma, such as the 2011 earthquake in northern Japan. I pray for my mother to accept Jesus. I also am praying for my church in Tokyo. They are training at Japanese Adventist young people like me to spread the gospel across Japan. Part of the th quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help the church expand for the work with the young people. Thank you. <coughs> Pastor Glenn will have special music.
you so much for that inspiration. To be like him. Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, 1 John 3, 2. In 1739, the town of Kingswood, England, was considered a religious wasteland. Respectable clergy had more or less given up on the place. It was a town of miners, men who spent the daylight hours underground, hardened by poverty and ignorance. They'd never been inside a church and had never heard the voice of a preacher. But one day, a man stood in the Kingswood Commons and began to speak to about 200 of them. His name was John Wesley. The doors of the established churches had been closed to him. He could preach only in the open air. The miners began to listen. Somehow, John Wesley's proclamation of gospel penetrated decades of deprivation. Tears began to stream down blackened faces. More and more miners and their families gathered. Soon 10,000 were packed in the grass of the common, and a spiritual revolution in England began. John Wesley's spiritual revolution was one of the most remarkable movements in the history of the Christian church. But here's something you might not know about him. John Wesley preached with a fiery urgency because he believed the coming of the Lord was near. As an ardent student of the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation, Wesley preached a message of repentance. He called people to holiness. In the light of his belief in the coming of Christ, he appealed for total commitment. The message of the soon return of our Lord is not the only message of hope. 
It is a call to holiness. It is an earnest appeal for God to do the deep work in our hearts. The message of the second advent urges us to make a total surrender to Christ as Lord. As one writer so aptly put it, if he doesn't reign as Lord of all, he doesn't reign of Lord at all. The Savior who died for us longs to be the Lord in us. The ideal of Christian character is Christ-likeness. The Desire of Ages, page 311. The words of an old hymn speak powerfully to our hearts today. Earthly pleasures vainly call me. I would be like Jesus. Be like Jesus, this my song, in home, in the home and in the throng. Be like Jesus all day long. I would be like Jesus. I think um, in lieu of our, our Sabbath school study this morning, Saul was called to a complete commitment, and I think that we are all called to a complete commitment. Shall we bow our heads for prayer again? Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Help us to gain a blessing from the Vacation Bible School program that we are about to witness. Help us to go forward this week and take all of the things that we've learned forward and help us to be a witness for you. In thy name, amen.
Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to the Holly uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, I'm blessed to be here on this Sabbath morning. Um, also, we're going to have the offering collected at the uh, end of the service as you're exiting. And I'm going to do the uh, prayer requests. God's guidance in all of our lives, our ministry to our church members and outreach to our community and friends, including community service center, Bible studies, glow tracks, Bible study, door-to-door -door ministry, prison ministry, Grow Michigan, Midweek Manna. Uh, we have meetings on Wednesday evenings at 7 here at the church. Um, to our schools, AJA and GLA, to all the students that are going, uh, our students in public schools, many health, uh, with health concerns and special prayer requests, including Chuck Reeve, Sherry Kahneman, Alan Clark, Julie Medina, Melissa Jameson, Ron Pritchak, Shauna Charles, Mary Lou Bauer, which I've seen her here. She looks uh, like she's doing much better. With gratitude and continued prayer for Sherry Lindstead, Richard Bauer, Tom Yost, and Blaine Walker. It's good to see Blaine here. Um, I was really praying for him as what he went through. Those who have lost loved ones, including Mary DeWitt's family, uh, please uh, put all these people in your prayers uh, through the week. And uh, Lynn Poole has a, a message uh, to say. Happy Sabbath, Holly Church. Do you know what tomorrow is? There's so many things in your bulletin. Look through your bulletin because there's so many things because we are actually a very active church. But the one thing I want to talk to you about is the cleaning bee at Adelphian Junior Academy. We've been working all summer long, and we haven't been real careful as we've been working all summer long. So it's messy in there. There's bugs everywhere because things die during the summer. The weeds have come up. I got some mulch to freshen up the mulch that's out front. There's so many things that we can do. The uh, Caulking around the windows on the outside has gotten old and needs to be refreshed, so if you're good at that, Jeff's going to have a whole bunch of that to, to put on tomorrow. The, we have that, have you seen the huge picture? We have the painting in the, the lobby. If you haven't, you should see it. It's awesome. It's like the second coming. It's this awesome, awesome painting, but it's right by the window, so we're going to put some tint on the windows to block the UV so that doesn't uh, get damaged, so that's on the list for tomorrow. We need to do a whole bunch of vacuuming because they're coming to clean the carpets this week. So it would be really great, everybody, if you can come out between 9 and noon tomorrow. Anytime during that, we'll have some food for your break time. And just everybody spend a little bit of time. It will add up to a lot of good things getting done. So I really appreciate that. Also, if you're looking for more to do, Grand Blank is working on their church tomorrow. So I'm sure they'd love to have some hands there as well. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for the Sabbath day that we can come closer to you each week and learn more about you. And please be with the kids in the program today uh, and all that they're doing. Uh, thank you for blessing us and, and all that you do for us. In your name I pray, amen. Service is going to be uh, started right now. Thank you. Let's turn in our hymnals to page 183, I Will Sing of Jesus' Love.
white as snow. I will sing of Jesus' love, endless praise. My heart shall give, he has died that I might live. I will sing his love to me. Nothing good for him I've done. How could he such love bestow, Lord, i own. My heart is one. Help me now, my love, to show. I will sing of Jesus' love, endless praise. My heart shall give the ashtide that I might live. today that I think you'll probably know also. So feel free to sing along with anything that you know. And we're so excited to share with you some of the things that we learned this week in VBS. down and we're going to watch some pictures from today. Keep an eye out because I think all of you guys are in it. Bless the Lord, oh my 
Robin's going to share um, some of what, each night we learned something new, and Robin's going to share what we learned the first night. Well, we started out about parables, and we told three parables, and Eden, can you, she gave the best answer for the parable. And what was a parable? A story that we can apply to our own lives. Exactly. And it's not always maybe that it happens, but it, it's an illustration of. Um, and the first, the first parable we talked about was the lost coin. And so I put on this side of the sanctuary a coin, a gold dollar coin, and had the kids look for it. And Eden Shishki was the one that found it. How did you feel when you found it, Eden? She was excited. All the kids were actually excited. And just like Jesus is excited when we come to him, when he rescues us, when we, he finds us, we're excited and God is excited for that. Um, another parable was the lost sheep. 
and all the kids scattered around the sanctuary and pretend they were sheep, and then we all came back, and there was one that was missing. Hmm, we have one missing. Hmm, should we go look for her? Let's go look for her. Lost sheep. Lost sheep. Here she is. Yes, Emma was our lost sheep, and even though a shepherd may have hundreds of sheep, he knows all of his sheep. And just like our Lord and Savior is our shepherd, and he knows each one of us, and he cares about each one of us. And if one of us is lost, Jesus comes and looks for us and finds us and brings us back. And our last parable was about the prodigal son. Now, was the prodigal son a very good son? No. What was he? Was he kind of, hmm, what would you say he was? Rebellious, maybe? Are any of us rebellious? Sometimes. And he demanded that he have his inheritance, which is usually given when the father dies. But this boy demanded his inheritance. And he ended up losing everything. The father said, sure. And I'm sure the father was very, very sad, just like our heavenly father is very sad when we go away from him. But he realized his, his um, error and when he had nothing, what did he have to eat at the very end? Pig slop. Pig slop. Yes. And sometimes we have to go to the very, very deep slop before we come to Jesus. But when the prodigal son came back, did the father sit there and wait and wait and wait for him? No. He ran out and met him. He did. He ran out and ran met him with open arms and the and the son wanted to be the father's servant but he said no he he gave him a party he welcomed him back and even though he had wasted everything that he had given the father still loved him and even though we waste our time and our our means sometimes god still loves us and will take us back and he will rescue us no matter what And every night we found a message in the bottle. And the first night, the message was, when I'm lonely, we are And each night we did something with nature. And what's the middle word in vacation Bible school? Anybody know what's the middle word in vacation Bible school? What's the middle word in vacation Bible school? Bible. Bible. What's the middle word in vacation Bible school? Bible. What's the word? Bible. Bible. So we were studying about the Bible, and sometimes studying the Bible is kind of like layers, like this little box. Joseph made this box for me. And when you take the layer off, Owen, can you pull the top off for me? What's inside? Another box, that's right. So sometimes when we take the, take the top off the box, we just see another box. But one of the things we talked about was sand dollars. Does anybody remember one thing about sand dollars? What do you remember about sand dollars? I don't know. You don't know. What do you remember about sand dollars? They eat sand to get bigger. That's right. The little ones, if there's a big storm, the sand dollars don't escape from the storm, but they will eat sand. So it will be heavy enough to stay on the bottom of the ocean. So Jesus sometimes puts sand in our lives so that we stay steady through the storms of life. I have called you friend, John 15, 15.
Jesus looks at me and says, it is good. We learned when I struggle. So my night we learned about when we struggle. Jesus rescues, right? So does anybody remember what we learned about somebody that God used to do something amazing? Do you remember who it was? Do you remember who it is? Raise your hand. Remember the night I told a story? Peter. Peter. Now God helped Peter do something amazing. What was it? Walk on water. Walk on water. So we learned about the disciples being in a boat and what was happening when we were in that boat, when they were in the boat. What was happening that was kind of scary? Do you remember? Raise your hand if you remember what was happening in that boat. There was a storm. There was a big storm, and they were scared, and they saw someone walking on the water. Who was it? Who did they see out there on the water? Jesus. Hold on. Jesus. They saw Jesus, and Peter said to Jesus, if that's you, call to me, and I'll walk to you. And did Jesus help Peter walk to him? Yeah. So as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he was on the water. But then something happened. Peter got... Sink. He began to sink. But he was struggling, right? But did Jesus just let him struggle? No. What did he do? He rescued him, remember? And so we learned that even though Jesus isn't calling us to walk on the water, that he can call us to do amazing things if we give our heart to him. And so maybe an amazing thing, Eden, Jesus might call you to do is to be a good, kind, loving friend, right? Or maybe he's calling one of you as you grow up to be a teacher and to teach other people about him, right? Or maybe he's calling you to be like Mrs. Scalfani, 
the amazing thing he gave her is to be able to do programs like this so you can all learn more about him, right? So even though Jesus is not calling any of you to go out and walk in deep water, he has got an amazing thing for each one of you if you give your heart to him. The next night, we looked at, what's that creature? What is it? You're right. You're right. And when we opened up the, oh, yes. When we opened up the next box, when we opened up the, can you take the top off of that box? What did we find? Another box. So we kept finding more things about the Bible as we opened the Bible about Jesus. And we never got quite to the end because we're not in heaven yet. But anyway, the octopus. No, this isn't the octopus. The sea lion. What did we learn that the sea lion does when the sea gets too rough? Do you remember? What do you, rem what do you remember about the sea lion? What do you remember? It goes on a rock. It goes on a rock. Yes, and what's the rock in the Bible? Jesus. You're absolutely right. Our rock is Jesus. No power, in, no power in the sky above or, the, or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8.39. You will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. John 16:33.
when I do wrong, let's try that one again. When I do wrong, Jesus rescues. On the next night, Arlene was with us. She couldn't be with us here today. But we all got one of these, and this represented our filthy rags, right, that Isaiah tells us about. And what did we do with our filthy rags? What did we do with them? What did it look like? It was the boat. Let's see. <clears throat> if we take our sail, because the only thing that truly rescues us is Jesus, and if we take our sail and we do this, what do we find? What is it? A cross. And we brought our filthy rags and we left them on the cross. And then we got something that was really dirty in return. What does Jesus give us? What do we pick up? A good smelling rag. Yeah, it was a good smelling one. And we wiped our hands and we all smelled like wild sweet orange for the rest of the night. And every time we smelled that, we wanted to remember that when we do wrong... And he wants to do that. And the last night, we all got a glow stick. What do you have to do to a glow stick to make it work? Bend it. Bend it and break it. And, and after that, you shake it up, and what happens? What happens when you break a glow stick? It comes out. It comes out, and it starts to glow. And Jesus was broken for us so that we could live with him forever and so that we could be lights and share him with other people too. And the next night we talked about another creature. What creature do we talk about next? A squid. A squid. How about an octopus? And what do you remember? How many legs does an octopus have? How many? Actually, an octopus only has, is it two legs and six arms? But there are eight appendages, and it is in the squid family. Uh, what about those legs that's very, very special? Do you remember about those legs? Do you remember? What if the leg gets cut off? What happens to it? It grows again. It grows again. Now, most creatures, if they grow another leg, if they get a, a tail cut off or a leg cut off, they might grow another leg, but it's always weaker. But what about the octopus? Do you remember? It uses, it uses its legs to find food. It does. It does use its legs to find food. It can even smell with those little suction cups. But the leg will be just as strong as the first one when it grows back. And so we talked about how Jesus is strong even if we broke something, Jesus is always strong. Come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. John 12, 46.
One of the strongest images standing strong in a storm is the lighthouse. In the era before radar, satellite navigation, and GPS systems, lighthouses were vital to protect ships from crashing onto rocks, shoals, and shores. Building lighthouses can be considered one of man's most noble endeavors. Since the beginning of seafaring, families and friends have lit bonfires at night to guide sailors home. George Bernard Shaw said, I can think of no other edifice constructed by man as altruistic as the lighthouse. They were built only to serve. An evangelist, Dwight L. Moody, commented, lighthouses don't fire cannons to call attention to their shining. They just shine. Jesus used this imagery of light to describe our role in his kingdom. We are the light of the world, he said, after claiming himself to be the true light. Lighthouses shine from inside. When they first made lighthouses, they had to build fires and they had to feed them all night to keep the fire burning. And they would do that because they loved the people that were coming. And sometimes, you know what, they didn't even know the people that they saved, but they wanted to make sure the ships didn't crash on the shore. And now we even use laser beams, so we don't have to feed the light anymore. But there's a big mirror inside that reflects the light, and it makes the light brighter. And we are, Jesus is the light, and we want to reflect his light to the world around us. He's our lighthouse, and we want to be the, reflect, the reflectors for that. I had Thursday night. And, kids, when I worry, really, let's try this again. When I worry, okay, so let me set the stage for you adults. We are the disciples, and Jesus is sleeping in the back of the boat, and we are out for a night fishing, and it goes like this. It sure is nice to be out on the water. I didn't think I would miss these late nights. Or the clear lake air and that fishy smell. You always have that fishy smell anyways. Hey. Cut it out, you two. Remember that time James and John got in that fight and Peter threw them off the boat? I don't think we need to resort to that. Remember that huge fish I caught? It was as big as John. I remember it being as big as John's arm. At least it was as big as John's foot. The wind's really starting to pick up. Jesus is sure tired. He fell right asleep in the back of the boat. Yeah, those early morning prayer sessions and all those people are draining. You always seem rejuvenated after an early morning in prayer, though. Those clouds suddenly are worrisome. Waves are starting to fill the boat with water. Here's a bucket. Start to bail. Ah, what are we going to do? Jesus! Jesus. Thank you, gentlemen, for the help. So the disciples were pretty okay by themselves, weren't they, for a while? What did they forget? in the back of the boat? Jesus. Jesus. Do we sometimes forget that Jesus is our guide? Yeah. When we finally remember, we're scared and we're petrified. So then we call out to Jesus. But the story is to always remember that he's there and to call out before you get scared. Do you think there might have been some hermit crabs somewhere around where Peter and, and them were fishing? I don't know if they live in that part of the country or not, but what is significant, what is especially significant about a hermit crab? Do they have their own house? Yeah. They move shells. Yeah, and, and what do they do if they outgrow their shell? They move into a new one. And do they do that all by themselves? They line up. Yeah, that was fascinating. Maybe you have seven hermit crabs that are growing up, and they all get in line from what? 
Biggest? Shells. Yeah, they find shells, but they get in line from the biggest one to the littlest one, and they wait until the biggest one gets filled, and then they all move up one shell. So Jesus is our lighthouse. Oh, yes. I wonder if we keep digging in God's word, what do you think? Will we find something very special in there? Wow, there's a mint in the middle of the box. I like these kinds of mints. I mean, I like these kinds of treasures, <laughs> these kinds of boxes. All right. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow their reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Than they? Therefore, do not worry. Matthew six twenty six to thirty one. Okay, and last night, Hun, testing, is that on? Testing? Okay, uh, can you hear me? It seems like it's not on. Oh, there it is. Okay. Last night, we learned about the story of Peter and John and how after Jesus had left them to go back to heaven, they felt kind of powerless, but they'd been praying for the Holy Spirit, and they knew the Holy Spirit was going to give them power to do great things. And one day when they were going to the temple for prayer, they saw a lame man, and he was laying there, and he was powerless. He couldn't do anything. He couldn't walk. He couldn't run. He was just lame, and he was asking for alms, asking for money for the poor. And Peter and John came by, and he asked them for money, and they said, no, we don't have any money, but we have something better. We are going to give you something better than money. They said, in the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. And he did, and he was able to stand up and run around and leap and praise the Lord. All because 
Jesus gave them power to do great things. And then we had a little illustration here about a piece of paper and scissors. And we asked, is there a way that I could make a circle big enough for me to climb through with just paper and scissors? And you guys know the answer to that, but we're going to show anyways. Uh, I didn't have tape. I didn't have glue. I had nothing, just paper and scissors. And it seems like a powerless task, but we were able to figure it out. So I'm going to show you guys really quick. to do great things for him too. So what does a clownfish do that has power to do something that no other fish can do? What can it do? It goes into anemones. Yeah, and the anemone, anemones are what? To all kinds of fish. Poisonous. They are poisonous. How does the clownfish not get poisoned by it? Because it has a special slime. Yeah, it has a special slime on it, and it has a symbiotic relationship where the, the fish is good for the, the um, anemone, and the anemone protects the clownfish. How many stripes are on the clownfish, Kip? Uh, three. Three, you're right. And uh, the clownfish can hide there, but can also swim around and dart around. But when he needs protection, he hides there. Where can we go to hide if we need protection? Um, to Jesus. Yes. We can always go to Jesus. Remember when I'm powerless? Jesus rescues. Jesus rescues. That's right. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one can snatch them from my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can snatch them from my Father's hand. John 10, 28, 29.
had a raft, because we all got shipwrecked on this island together, and Mr. Dave Shishke was a very funny shipwrecked man, wasn't he, guys? And I know there was some disappointment that he was unable to make an appearance tonight as the handsome stranger. But when we first got here and we started working on our raft, our sail was full of holes, and we started patching our holes with... Because when we see um, the wind, can we see the wind? We can't, but we can totally see what the wind does. And wind in a sail with holes in it won't make that raft go anywhere. But wind with a sail that doesn't have holes will push the raft or the sail uh, boat along the way. We still have a few holes on our sail. And, oh, I put the tape in the cabinet. But we'll pretend that we have tape. We would have patched the tape up now. Layla, how do we patch our holes? We thought about places we could see God or smell things that remind of God or feel things that remind us of God. What did you see or hear or smell or feel today? Jesus? Jesus, yeah. So we would have taped that up. Thank you, Layla. What's another one? Jaden? Apples in our backyard? My cat? One. Kipton. And then Corbin, then Abby. You guys can also. Stars. Church. Sunshine. Water. Water. And there are so many things around us that remind us of God. And with that, in any situation that we find ourselves in, sometimes like a life vest, he just keeps us up in the storm. Sometimes like a lifesaver, he pulls us out of it. Um, but regardless of what happens in the storms of life, when we're worried, when we're powerless, when we're, we do wrong, Rescues. So please open your songbooks. So number 462, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine because Jesus rescues us. We're going to sing that, and then our leader is going to have a closing prayer, and then on the way out, remember the offering for our local church. Turn in our hymnals to page 462. And let us all stand.
praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. For the mission all is at rest, I and my Savior am happy and blessed. My Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being here in our presence today while we're here. Thank you that you go with us when we leave and help us to be lights for you in each day and all the places that we go. In your name we pray. Amen.